Hello everybody, Flick here and welcome to a short let's look at of the Stanley Parable. A Dear Esther-esque experience of a game by Galactic Cafe which I thoroughly enjoy. It's a remake of a Half-Life 1 mod and I love this game. I don't know if you should call it a game. I love this thing. I love the Stanley Parable. And spoiler warning, you are going to see a playthrough of the game. You can reach an end state in the game very, 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 very quickly. I am not going to show what is the best ending, and I'm doing kind of bunny ears for that. I'm going to show my favourite ending, and hopefully it will give you an idea of why I love this game so much. So we're going to go into begin the game here, and the, the first load is really, really long. So you play as Stanley, and I'm going to fast forward the intro, by the way, so I'll quickly give a synopsis here. You play as Stanley, you are told which buttons to press at your console every single day, in a monotonous job that I presume you hate or eventually come to hate and then you suddenly realize one day that all your co-workers are gone and you have no idea why and you're suddenly alone and you're not given any orders and there's this disembodied narrator narrating what you're doing and may or may not be the antagonist or uh, it's hard to explain primarily the game's actual point is a look at and kind of parody of gaming tropes as well as societal ones as well and it, it's deep on a lot of levels whereas it can also sometimes be borderline silly the narrator in particular is fantastic he has a wide range and the writing is stellar and hopefully we'll see an example of that once the game actually loads and i quick stalling that's the word i'm looking for stalling for time that was not on purpose by the way uh but yeah we'll get into this this is built on the source engine but with a lot of stuff um turned off you can't jump for example so it's pretty much you're just controlling Stanley, walking through the world, exploring things. You are maybe given choices or maybe you're not. That's kind of like, and we'll click to this skip the intro. Yes, this is the story of a man named Stanley. I've covered that already. Thank you, narrator. So we always start the same. And even if you reach an end state, as the game says during the loading screens, the end is never the end because you are always thrown back, even whether you get the good or so-called good ending or not. So yeah, we'll just step out here and we'll hear the narrator. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So there we go, and as we go, although it hasn't happened yet, doors often close behind you so that you cannot go back on a choice once you make it, if indeed you are making a choice. So here we go. We'll come to the very first one right here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I am willing to bet at the point at this point when everybody reaches it, they all defiantly go to the right. Will I do that? Let's do that a little bit. Let's defy him a little this bit. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, that, that sounds legit. So there's a lot of parodies in the game, as I was saying. There's a wonderful story, and of course there's also this fantastic room. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. I did indeed. 125 for a cold drink. Is that a good price? Can I get a cold drink? Yeah, it yes. seems not. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. I can approve of that level of sarcasm. By the way, at this oh. point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. As I was about to say, I'm going to try very hard last, to never talk over him. The amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Oh, is he going to take the door? Is he? Is he? Is he? Yeah, he is. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. You know, I think my de general dislike of a game called Gone Home is is a good reflection on why the Stanley Parable is so much better when it's essentially the same kind of premise where you are simply let loose in an environment and set to explore. Now in Gone Home you can obviously pick up stuff and examine it. However, I still think that the Stanley Parable does it so much better. 
The Nereer help, certainly, was this, to synergize core value expenditure, shift global market power, and monetize free to play. That is a fantastic plan! Broom closet. Oh, okay, the door opened the other way, whatever. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. That's not entirely true now, is it? There's very clearly a broom. There's whatever the hell this is. Tape. There was nothing Sp here. Th there's, there's plenty of stuff to here. Make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. There's a wrench. There's copper wiring. Whatever the hell that is. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. I am doing something. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Again, it's not technically true. Shall we piss him are off you, a bit more? Are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Okay, that would do for now. For the record, there is more dialogue. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Choices, choices. We're going up here. And I'm going to skip a bit of dialogue here to annoy him on purpose. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. True. So he relaxed for a few minutes. Oh, I forgot the New Age music. Calming New Age music. Please don't content ID me, creator of New Age music. That'll give me anxiety, that's for damn sure. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Alright, here we go. So by the way, we are approaching where I plan to end this Let's Look At. And once we reach a certain point, I will actually stop talking. And I will just let you enjoy this one ending of at least ten. There is at least ten. And there's variations on each as well. And the more you play in one setting, the more the start of the story can sometimes change. Like, for example, you can frustrate the narrator enough that he puts a line down for you to follow to do the story correctly if you defy him enough. And sometimes you can break the game to the point the world itself starts breaking. Just as other examples of weird banana crazy stuff that can happen. Is banana crazy a expression? I'm going to make it one. It Just you wait. Banana crazy. It's going to be a thing. Chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. We'll see about that. So, this was the Stanley Parable. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. It's often in sales now, and I highly, highly, highly recommend that you pick this up. And now, I think I'm just going to be quiet for the rest of this, and I'm going to let you enjoy what I would class as a bad ending, however it is by far my favourite. There's probably about five more minutes of gameplay left, but don't worry, they give full permission to monetize everything to do with this, so I'm not worried about not particularly speaking. That's a lot of cigarettes on the floor. Anyway, yeah, Stanley Parable, I massively encourage you to buy this, this is a fantastic experience. I may even prefer this to Dear Esther, although the tone is very, very different between the two, so it depends what you're looking for, really. Anyway, yeah, enjoy the rest of this. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Hmm. 
Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life, for he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine, I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. 
running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless to see you made humble. This is not a challenge, it's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No end in here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. <laughs> <laughs>